needs to stop now. Greetings. In today's video, I want to go over how to effectively make between 1.4 billion to 1.6 billion silver an hour Elvia Fogans as a sucks age. I recently covered Elvia Nagas, so if you want to check that out, the video can be found in the top right corner. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'll be going over buffs, add-ons, explaining how the AP caps work and how to get the most damage possible whilst grinding Elvia Fogans. If you've already watched my Elvia Orcs video or my Elvia Nagas video, then you already know most of what I'm about to cover here. Alright, so let's get into it. The most AP cap for this grind is 803. All the grind spot AP caps can be found at garmouth.com, I'll put a link to that in the description below. The PvE add-ons are shown. This allows opponent uptime and monster AP, crit chance, crit damage, car speed, the sprinkle of back attack damage. The AP from your add-ons will help you reach the 803 AP cap, so take this into consideration when calculating your total AP. It's important to note that all Elvia spots are considered a 5% AP value over cap. It simply means that any AP above the grind spot cap will only have 5% value per AP point. We however will be trying to get more AP than the cap, so we have AP to sacrifice for slight increases for external damage types, I'll explain this later. Find out your current AP, you want to open up your character sheet, then below click My Stats. To show a detailed breakdown of all your current stats, if you play Succession, you want to add your AP to your extra AP against monsters together to give you your total AP. This is the number that needs to exceed the monster AP cap of 803 for Elvia Fogans. If, however, you're Awakening, you need to add the same values but replace AP with Awakening AP. Artifacts, you'll always run AP against monsters and PvE, or Kaboos if you have them. The light stones will want to run the Wild Demi Humans, which consists of an Iridescent and three Raw Light Stones, I'll explain why later. Ideally, you want to be running all-out attack lightstone effect as this provides the biggest damage boost. Alternatively, you can also use death blow for classes lacking crit chance modifiers in its skills. Now we have a basic understanding of how the monster AP caps work, we now need to find means to reach it or even surpass it to allow us to drop AP for more external damage types. Let's go over the buffs next. First you're going to need a food buff, which you'll need raw AP is going to be a simple cron meal. However, if you're surpassing the AP cap without a simple cron meal, then you'll want to swap this for an exquisite cron meal. This is where external damage comes into play. Simple Cron provides 30 monster AP, whereas an Exquisite Cron only provides 8, but also provides 5% crit and back attack damage. These are values that go over the cap. Then we have Droughts. If you need more monster AP, you want to run a Frenzy Drought. If not, then you can use the cheaper Giant's Drought. And we have Church Buffs. Each costs 10 million silver for a 5 hour duration buff. These can be found in any major city. If you need more AP, you want to have the Blessing Attack. If the DP is below 340, or you're running a Frenzy Drought around this DP, I also recommend the Blessing Protection. If you're under geared, then you can also grab the 10% crit damage buff from Carolyn and Heidel. It's 25 energy and lasts for 30 minutes. I recommend this buff to newer players as it's a minute right away from this grind. Now let's talk about the crystals. This is my usual PvE crystal setup which prioritizes AP and some external damage such as crit. However, like we discussed earlier, going above the AP cap is bad unless you plan to sacrifice the AP for values that are not capped such as crit damage. Let's talk about species damage. So having one point of extra damage to damn humans is the same as having 0.85 of an AP point. The important part is this does not have a cap. This is why we run the wild demi and lightstone effect. So this is my Elvia crystal setup. I've sacrificed some raw AP to gain 2% attack cast speed as this is not capped. Last things to note before we get into the grind itself. Elvia Serendio uses his own money stones. Once filled, it can be traded one to one for a shard. Assuming you're selling a cup at the max value of 5 billion silver, a shard is valued at 25 million each. These mining stones can be purchased in Glitch from Wacky Toshi. On average, I feel between 5 to 6 per hour. Be sure to get a bunch of stones from both Elvia Nagas and Elvia Fogans. These are called Glitch Swamp, Swamp Naga, and Southern Swamp, Swamp Fogan. You can use either a level 1 or a level 2 loot scroll, depending on how many scrolls you have and how often you grind, there is no wrong answer. Make sure to have a T5 pet and as many T4 pets as possible. I cannot stress how of an investment this is for the whole of Black Desert grinding. Be sure to set your pets to Agile to the fastest loot speed. When you have an Elvia weapon, be sure to lock your Black Spirit Rage, as the skill does not stack with the weapon buff. You can do this by hitting Alt-B. With this grind, there is only one weapon choice. This is the yellow weapon called Young Nark, as it does a lot more damage to Fogans. We'll be grinding the close by Elvia Nagas, which drop this weapon regularly. The way I grind Fogans is quite unusual to say the least, as it involves grinding Elvia Nagas that are very close to the Fogans grind during your weapon downtime. You can simply stick to Fogans exclusively, however, but I do highly recommend at least getting an old yellow weapon from the nearby Nagas. The important thing to note here is you only want to grind the Fogans once you have a yellow weapon buff. As previously mentioned, these are Young Nark. Once the weapon buff expires, you can go across the road west of the grind over to the Elvia Nagas and grind these during your weapon downtime. Simply repeat this process, giving you 30 minutes of one-shotting Fogans with the yellow weapon and 30 minutes of regular Naga grind whilst waiting for the debuff to expire. Lastly, be sure to connect and invest energy into both the Northern Swamp node and the Glish Swamp node, as this will increase your drop rate while grinding Elvia Fogans and Elvia Nagas. This is drop rate that goes above the 300% cap. Uh, that about covers it. I'll show a few rotations grinding with a weapon and without. You have a good understanding how the rotations work. As always, you can catch me live on twitch.tv forward slash grimkill and bombard me with questions you might have. I'll put a link in the description below. With how I received the previous two videos were, and hopefully this one too, I'll most likely either cover the basics of Elvia round to wrap everything you could need to effectively grind the spots overall in Elvia, 
I've also been thinking about covering the newest Udikita spots, such as Dark Seekers or Yahaz Red Highlands. It's still a bit up in the air, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next, but we'll see. Also, you can also join the Discord and let me know if there's any of these videos helpful. I actually really enjoy making them. Link is in the description below, but once again, be mindful of the weebs and the outrageous amount of booba.
How about covers how to effectively grind LVO to Fogans? Hope you found this video helpful and you've had any input or improvements I can add, then always feel free to let me know in the comments below. I do highly appreciate feedback. Or come by the stream at twitch.tv forward slash grimkill. Again, the link to the live stream will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later, nerds.